Video clips from First Class Rugby can be really useful to help you design your practices. And in this video, we're going to look at the defence in particular. Our focus points, we look at the individual behaviours, followed by team behaviours, and then look at how they are used in my own environment to design coaching practices. So first up, we're going to look at individual behaviours in 1v1 scenarios. So even though there's a full defensive line, we see 1v1 start to appear within the line. And on this occasion, you can see the ball carrier has got two potential 1v1s. A player that's going lateral, and then he's going to have to react back in. And a player that's being blocked, and he will then have to react and deviate his line. So as the clip plays through, you can see that we have one 1v1 and a second 1v1. So then looking at practice, I looked at the 1v1 practice. And on this occasion, you can see the ball's been carried in one hand. Now the ball carrier has got the option in this practice as to whether he carries the ball in one hand, left or right, or in two hands. And we varied that, varied that up as much as possible. You can also see there's a blue cone for the defender, there's a blue cone for the attacker. There's a white cone for the attacker, a white cone for the defender, and so on. And they are designed specifically to enable the game to be randomised, to mean that it is repetition without repetition. So you get lots of different practice goals, but they're never the same twice in a row. And they're also quite specific in terms of where these type of things might happen within the game. So in terms of the space that they're playing in, that was varied up dependent on the players and their attributes. So on this occasion, I, ch I chose two players who play either on the wing or in the centre, and they are chosen for their own individual characteristics. So one player with very good footwork, another player with lots of speed, and looking at the way that they then can challenge each other. So the rules of the game, I'll call the colour, they have to run to the colour, and then they have to then try and score over the line. So watch this as it goes through. So red's been called this occasion, Goes to the red, lovely bit of footwork to then to get away. Have a look at that again within a 1v1 scenario in a slightly different match. So go Wasps against Gloucester. We've got ball carrier, a disconnect in the defensive line that creates another 1v1. So as we play that through, you can see that the players haven't used the same kind of behaviour as footwork to get through. Orange. So in this example, I've called Orange. That means there's a real distance between. It's actually very similar to the situation that uh, Wasps and Gloucester were in a moment ago. And what we're in, interested in now is the way the defender reacts. So you can see that the defender has shown some behaviours that are really relevant to the full game. So as we play the clip through, you can see that feet are planted. He's quite stiff in his position. This is giving the attacker an opportunity to step in. He's also shifting his body weight away to the right. That's exactly where the ball carrier wants him to go. So in terms of tells for the attacker, the defender's given him everything he needs. My challenge then to the defender and the future goes then is to keep his feet lively, not to plant his feet at any point, and to maintain his space until he feels he's confident to go make a tackle. Right now he's gotten so close to the bite point that he can't possibly react. He hasn't got enough time. That allows him then to be stepped. If you then put that into, into a team scenario, so there's a few behaviours that we're looking for. We want our defensive team, it's Wasps on this occasion, to get on side, get square and get connected. And those are the three focus points I would apply to any age group, all the way from under nines, all the way up to senior men's rugby. So you can see on this occasion, we've got Wasps defending. Their first job, get on side, mission accomplished. The second job is to get square. And by square, I mean that their shoulders are parallel to touchline. And when they're square, it means that they can react either way. So wherever the, the ball carry goes, they can react either way. Now the third principle means that those things actually pay off or not. So getting connected is really, really important. So as they press, they go remain connected. And as the clip moves through, you can see we've got small breaks in connection. So we've got a break in this situation, and we've got a break in this situation. So Dan Robson on the outside, his intention will be to step in. But the issue that breaks in connection make is that there's an indecision and the defenders don't quite know where they should be tackling that creates a half gap opportunity and Gloucester then get gain line so putting that into practice I then played a 5v4 two-handed touch game it was two phase only and this game is based loosely on the on the game that you saw previously the 1v1 practice so at the side of the pitch we've got a number of cones we've got a defensive set of cones and an attacking set of cones so two red ones are the closest so if I call red, the defence have to go to, to red. On this occasion, I've called yellow. You can see that the defensive team are lined up on the yellow cone. And I've got yellow on this side and then on the far side of the pitch. You can see the attacking team have gone back to their yellow cone. And what that does is vary up the distance between the attack and the defence and therefore the time and the pressure that they have. So during the clip, 
the players at this point had just been left fairly open. They're able to make their own decisions. Not too much feedback from myself. And what I'm interested in is, am I seeing similar behaviours in this activity to what I saw in the 1v1 activity? This is the same player you saw earlier who was, uh, who was stepped by his teammate. You can see that he's ignoring the cues from the attacker. So he's sliding off, he's thinking about the next player, and he's left then a 2v1 on the inside. Whereas what he should have done was stay nice and square, stay square, stay connected, I mean that we don't get stepped on the inside, and that's definitely one of our rules of defence, that we don't get beaten on the inside. So that allows the ball carrier to get through. And this happens a few times during the first few goals, which you would expect with uh, this kind of practice, which is a lot of pressure. So new colours have been called, they work their way back, and then I'm interested as to how people get influenced. So we had a block in line, which we saw in the first clip. You can see a, a player who has been influenced by that, by that block in line. And I'm then interested by how do they swim off? How do they get outside to be able to mean that they can shut them off? And they actually do okay in that occasion. Our next principle of defense is then our space sins. So they're onside, they're square, and they're connected. You can see Exeter on this occasion, their space sins are relevant to the team that's in front of them. So their spaces will always be slightly different, but they've got to be relevant to the attack. On this occasion, you can see there's an attack off nine. So space-wise, there's no need to have too many players in there because there's no pick-and-go option. But they do have a plug option in behind. They do have a guard, and that guard, it's very unlikely that the guard is going to stay in that position. What we then see is that they will try and bring some line speed. So they get off the mark, and you can see they're being met behind the gain line. They're aiming for double tackles, and that's relevant to their space sins as well. If you want double tackles, you have to be slightly narrow in your defence. Again, get onside, get square, get connected. If you do those things quickly, you can then press off the line nicely. So good line speed off the mark. Again, met uh, either on or behind gain line. And this is a really good example. Really good press, caught just behind the gain line. So my feedback to the players in between, uh, with, after they'd had a few goals, was then to think about, can they get off the line? Can they go meet the, the attack behind the gain line? And the gain line is defined by the cones and, and where the ball starts. So this time you can see a big difference in terms of the pressure. Really getting off the mark, working get on side, and a lot better talk as well. So two touches made and that was the target. It's only a two-touch game. So if they make, make the second one, it's no try. So again, get on side get square, get connected. They're then thinking about their space sins and indeed bringing line speed to what they're doing. So really want them getting off the mark and trying to catch the opposition behind the mark. Now this kind of practice can be changed up as much as you wish. On this occasion, they had about five or six minutes of goes and then off to the right-hand side, you can see there's another group. They're doing a slightly different activity on catch pass and then we'd vary that up back and forth. And then I'd always be thinking about matching players and mixing players. So in this activity, you can see we've got a couple of front row forwards and then mix them with back row forwards and with backs. So always have some variety because that's the way that the game is played. I hope that's helped to give you some ideas as to how you can use video footage to create your own practice ideas and indeed some of the key features involved with coaching the defence. If you enjoy my videos, please hit subscribe. It's really useful to get your feedback as well in the comments. See you again.